Hey everyone, in today's video I want to share some fun and effective ways to teach students all about 2D and 3D shapes. Now a little over a year ago I uploaded this video right here and in that video I also go through some activities and fun ways to teach your students all about shapes, but in today's video I have some new ones for you. So I have four fun activities to help your students meet those geometry standards. If you're ready to see these activities, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive right in. Diving right in, activity number one is to have students feel and build different 2D and 3D shapes. Now I definitely talked about having students explore different shapes in my last video, but here I want to specifically talk about having students feel the shapes and build the shapes. It's one thing to have students be able to look around and identify different squares, rectangles, triangles, spheres, etc., but it's another thing for them to actually feel it and build it with their own hands. The application of building these shapes really allows students to use a multi-sensory learning format to take what they know about these shapes and put them together. For example, this is one multi-sensory way students could build a square with four corners and four equal sides. Now, these particular tools come from this pack right here. I shared about this in my top 10 favorite math tools video. That's right there in case you want to check it out. But this is from Learning Resources. I'll try not to make it loud, but here we go. Um, this It's 129 pieces and I love it because it has different cards and materials and tools for students to build all sorts of 2D and 3D shapes. So they can even build a sphere, they can build a triangular prism, they can build a pyramid, hexagon, all sorts of things. Now in my classroom, I would definitely set this up in some sort of center or math station. Not only does this kit come with all the different pieces, but it comes with a ton of different cards that look like this. Um, here is 3D shapes and it shows you what they need to make a cube. So I love that too because students will recognize they need 12 of those pieces. They need eight of the corners. So it's reinforcing that cubes have 12 edges and eight different vertices. And then it gives them prompts to build the shape. It asks, can you build a bigger one? Can you build a smaller one? On the back of this is a rectangular prism card. And then there are so many more. Like I said, it has 2D shapes. It also has students combining different shapes to make new things, which is really Really fun. Anyway, this video is not sponsored by them, but I did want to share this tool because I absolutely love it for doing exactly what I talked about in tip one, building these shapes. Now, of course, you don't need to buy that in order for students to go ahead and build their own shapes. You can do this with things like toothpicks and Play-Doh or toothpicks and marshmallows. I've seen that many, many times. That's also fun and engaging and helps students actually, you know, build the shape. Instead of using the toothpicks, you can also just use Play-Doh and have students form the straight lines from the Play-Doh. I've also used a bunch of colorful straws in the past. Now that has some limitations because the straws usually aren't super bendable um, in terms of making something like a circle or an oval or a sphere of any kind. So that has its limitations, but you can still make a triangle. They can bend them to a nice, you know, sharp point to make a triangle. So you could use straws. Another example is using geo boards. Now this has students build shapes in a different way um, instead of making like a 3D model of it. They can show a square, they can show triangles, they can show tons of different shapes on these geo boards and if you google um geo board shape cards there's like a ton of free little shape cards if you wanted to throw this in a center with some elastics and students can simply flip a card make the shape Basically, activity number one is to have students build shapes in numerous different ways and give them plenty of opportunities to build these shapes throughout your geometry unit. All right, activity number two is to have a vocabulary sort. Now, I read about this activity in the uh, education journal called The Mathematics Teacher. I think it was at the beginning of 2022, I believe in January, but I just love this idea and I wrote it down because I knew I wanted to share it with you all. And having a vocabulary sort is a great way for students to make connections to different words and what they're learning, especially within a certain skill or subject like we're talking about here with geometry. Now when doing a word sort like this one, I would do it whole group and we would really talk about each of these different terms, what it means, and then we decide how we want to go ahead and sort it. So I don't give them the headers and open word sort is one where again, they don't have headers, they don't have categories to divide it into. The students actually decide on their own or with your help how they want to sort these words. And sometimes instead of just a clear sort, like with two categories, sometimes we end up with something like a word web where we're connecting ideas. And all of these options are great because they get students talking about vocabulary 
and it helps you understand what they are understanding about these mathematical concepts. To do these with 2D and 3D shapes, let me show you what it would look like in my classroom. So here's an example of what a shape vocabulary sort might look like um, based on some of the concepts we have learned throughout our unit. So I like to do this uh, with movable pieces. So here's an example where I just typed in some words, but I made them as images. Um, you could probably do the same thing if you go ahead and insert a text box here and type in the word circle. And then what I would do is I would make a border. So I'd make a border um, just so it looks like its own concept. I made these with like, you know, you could fill in the background. You can make it look however you want. But I like to make it its own kind of thing so we can move it around throughout our discussion. You could do the same thing um, by writing all of these words on index cards and having students kind of sit in a circle as you discuss the concepts. Now, again, this is an open vocabulary sort, so there's no right or wrong answer. There aren't any designated categories that students need to sort things into. The goal here is that students make connections with the words. So what students might see as they start to kind of read each word, and again, you're doing this with your whole group, so uh, you imagine a lot of like shouting out, a lot of answers going on at one time, or rather that's kind of what I am hoping for, not necessarily the shouting out, but the everyone just sharing their answers is kind of a free for all and we will discuss it. So students after reading these words might say, hey, I see some 3D shapes and some 2D shapes in here. And then they might notice this word right here, two dimensional. If you haven't discussed that already, you can talk about 2D, 3D, what they actually mean. And students might say, well, I see, again, some shapes that belong under those categories. So let's try to do that. So let's say we put sphere over here, 3D will be on this side. And if we come to something where we don't know where it exactly belongs just yet, we can move it to the side. So two dimensional we'll put here. Here I'm seeing some descriptors of different shapes. But I don't know where they should go just yet or my class hasn't you know we haven't come up to a come up with a consensus yet so pyramid we'll put over here and again the first thing they might see are just some examples of 2d and 3d shapes so we can again with index cards or move these on the board if you're using a smart board you can have students come move them themselves so okay we can kind of all agree that yes these four are 3D shapes. These three are 2D shapes. Now, typically when we're talking about sides, we are usually doing that when describing 2D shapes. Edges, usually 3D shapes. Faces, usually 3D shapes. And then vertices and corners are synonyms that we've probably used. So maybe we kind of connect them down here because maybe they go in the middle and belong with both. And we can see if our class agrees upon this type of sort. Now, students might also take a look at this and they might say, well, wait a sec, I actually think, you know, 2D and 3D are similar descriptors of types of shapes that we've been working on, right? So those belong together and we might even like draw a line to connect them. And then they might say triangle is a 2D shape, but the pyramid has triangle faces. So maybe those are connected. Um, the pyramid also has a square face. So maybe that is kind of connected on the bottom there. And then they say, well, a cube, oops, I didn't mean sides. I meant square. Sorry about that. And then they might say a cube has square faces. And here, instead of creating some kind of like sort, instead, what we're doing is uh, putting the category over here might be like faces, like triangle and pyramid are connected. It's also connected to a square, which is connected to a cube. And we're not really doing a sort, but we're doing some sort of web here, right? Like we're connecting the words in a meaningful way. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. The best part about this is that through these conversations, we are just deepening our students' understanding of all these different terms. Activity number three for helping students learn more about 2D and 3D shapes is to have them draw different shapes. Now in the past, this is a step I've often skipped, thinking that, you know, after I've had students build all these shapes many times using all those tools earlier that they might not need this. But after having learned so much about the CRA, the concrete representational and abstract model and kind of way of teaching students, I do think this is a step that should not be skipped because it really helps students take their concrete learning, take what 
they have physically been able to represent, and then based on what they know and their memory, actually turn it into a representation or a drawing. This also helps students because geometry in those later grades is very, very visual. As students get older, they are drawing polygons and triangles and figuring out angles. It's a very visual subject for our students, so this way we can have students take what they know and apply it using paper and pencil by showing a representation. Now this activity doesn't need to be a super in-depth one. You can simply show your students how to make a triangle based on what we know. What should a triangle have? It should have three sides, it should have three corners. Let's draw some triangles. Have them get out a paper and a pencil, or maybe some fun markers, or maybe their whiteboard and a marker. Have them draw some triangles. It's gonna be a similar format to when you are having your students practice handwriting, right? You are showing them what an H looks like, how to draw an H, and then you have them try drawing their own. Now to help you with this, I have three fun videos that are great to show to your students. The first is this one right here, and this is called Learn How to Draw and Identify Different Shapes by Kiddos World TV. And this video shows students how to draw different 2D shapes. And after students draw each 2D shape, it also points out where those shapes can be found in the real world. So that's another fun connection students can make. Another video is this one right here, and this is from Art for Kids Hub. I love this YouTube channel for all sorts of reasons. Um, they have great directed drawings, but then they also have these fun activities here where students can draw a hippo, shark, a robot. They can draw all sorts of different fun things using shapes. So throughout this directed drawing, the illustrator actually has you draw a circle for this, a triangle for this, a rectangle for this, and at the end, they've actually come up with a full picture. So both of those videos were with 2D shapes and they are great and a bunch of fun and you should start there because when we're making 3D shapes a lot of the faces are, you know, 2D shapes so you should start there. But I know you're probably thinking what I would be thinking and that is most of my first grade students and kindergarten students and even second grade students would have a lot of trouble drawing some of those 3D shapes. So to help with that, Art with Mrs. F has a whole video right here. It's only about five minutes long, but she shows you explicitly how to teach your students to draw different 3D shapes. So if you feel like you yourself aren't that great of an artist, even for some basic shapes, those three videos are sure to help. They are great ones. But remember, activity number three is to have students draw shapes. And last but not least, activity number four is to review geometry concepts. Oftentimes when we are teaching geometry in the younger grades, it tends to be like an isolated unit, which makes sense because we spend so much of the year teaching number sense, addition, subtraction, place value, they all kind of mesh together. And then it seems like measurement and money and geometry, they get like two little weeks and then we kind of move on to other things. But a great way to keep up that spiral review of learning is to incorporate games. Even when your main subject lessons might be about something else like subtraction or place value, you can still in your math centers include older skills to have students review them, like these. The first game or activity I love are just using these simple shape composing cards with pattern blocks. Now I have a whole bunch of these and they are completely free, so I will link them down in the description, but all you need are to print out these cards and have a little bucket of pattern blocks and students can practice composing shapes. Then I also have three games I love from my print and play math games pack. Here's what the first one looks like. It is called 2D or 3D Find It. And essentially I have a board for 2D shapes as well as 3D shapes and students will roll a die. They will find that shape over on the side and then they need to find a shape in real life from the grid that matches. And they simply color it in and they go back and forth. And they see who finds the most at the end. Another game I love is this one right here. It is called Roll and Cover. Here students roll a die and they have a direction sheet on the board where they might have to find a shape with three sides or with four sides or with five corners. They also have some fun things like remove an opponent's game piece. And here they also go back and forth to see who can cover the most shapes. Last but not least, I also love this game. It is called Race to Robot. And it reminds me of one of those Art for Kids hub videos where they're making different things out of shapes. And here students will actually use a spinner to spin. And if they land on a shape like rectangle, they have to find a rectangle in their robot game board and color it in. Or they might have to find a triangle or something with four sides. They have to basically read the little description on the side and find a matching shape in their robot game board. Whoever's the first to color in their whole robot in that game wins. So there you have four engaging and effective activities for teaching your students all about 2D and 3D shapes. 
As usual, anything mentioned in today's video will be listed down in the description below for you to check out. And I'll also go ahead and link last year's video, this one right here, all about shapes, because like I said, that one includes some different activities that you may want to incorporate into your geometry unit. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of any new video. See you in the next one. Bye.